And uh, it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted for us this context of Scripture, beginning with verse number one. It's going to be all right, baby. It's going to be all right. See, they stopped crying because I said it's going to be hard. Luke chapter 19. While you're landing there, I know this is uh, unique, but, you know, we found out today that this is autism. Uh, Can we thank God for our special children? Weren't they wonderful? They were wonderful. They were absolutely wonderful. Luke chapter number 19, it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted for us this context of Scripture beginning with verse number 1. <clears throat> Your Bible should read, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at your house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. I want to tag this text out on a limb. You may be seated in the Lord's church. A woman becomes pregnant because her husband's seed comes into union with her egg and it fertilizes, goes through that process, and now a new life is growing within her. As a result of that new life growing within her, she has to... um, buy new clothes as a result of how that life is going to cause her body to expand. She has to alter her diet. Uh, Her diet must now be restrictive and or specific. Some things she can eat, some things she cannot. She has to also alter her activity and her actions because of that new life that is growing in her some of her personal habits have to be altered some things she used to do she cannot do while that new life is growing in her in some nation church when a woman is pregnant a new life is growing in her and it demands for changes in her attire, her appetite, and her actions. All of those things have to change because of the new life that is growing inside of her. Maybe I'll say it again because you didn't get it. In summation, her life on the outside has to change because of the life that's growing on the inside and ladies and gentlemen since you and I claim salvation since you and I are Christians the life of Christ on the inside of us demands for the life on the outside of us to change 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are made new. I die daily that the life of Christ may be made manifest in my mortal flesh. I'm trying to tell you, church, that since we are saved, salvation must not stop with our convictions. Convictions are only the place where our salvation begins. But convictions must affect our conduct and our beliefs must affect our behavior. We believe, therefore we behave. I'm trying to tell you, church, that uh, being saved is not limited to a cognitive theoretical persuasion about theology but the whole point of having the theology so is so that it would affect our sociology it would affect our behavior and our conduct and how we treat each other translated church since you still not respond to me um, you can't be saved and hate people You can't be saved and can't stand people. You can't be saved and be evil. Because your salvation isn't just vertical, it's horizontal. <clears throat> it's a contradiction to say you got the joy of the Lord and you mean as hell at the same time. That's a, that's a contradiction in terms. Your salvation is not just expressed in how you feel about Jesus, but it expresses itself in how you treat people as a result of how you feel about Jesus. Do I have any help in this room? I'm trying to tell you that your conduct ought to match your convictions and your behavior ought to match your belief. Let me see if I can repeat it for them people right long there. I'm trying to tell you that your conduct ought to match your convictions and your behavior ought to match your belief. And if your belief hasn't caught up, if your behavior hasn't caught up with your belief, you at least need to start with some belief. Let me see if I can help you. Uh, the truth is the truth whether you acquiesce to it or not. At least if I'm not doing everything God wants me to do, I'm not going to challenge what God has said for me to do. Do I have any help here? Because the life outside of you ought to be altered by the life that is inside of you. Such as the discipline discovered in the discourse of Luke chapter number 19. It is this it is this story by which Luke has exclusive coverage of the life of Zacchaeus to match his theological thesis that Jesus Christ wasn't just the son of God, but Jesus Christ was a social activist who was lobbying for the least, the lowly, the left out, and the left behind. Luke's gospel wants to tell us that Jesus' gospel is not discriminatory. <laughs> that the gospel is not racist or sexist or classist. That the gospel of Jesus Christ is universal and not contingent. And that's why I stick to preaching the gospel because the gospel can be preached in any context to anybody. We've got to be careful that we don't alter the gospel according to the audience. Yeah. 
you can't go into the third world countries and preach prosperity gospel but you can preach the soteriological gospel of Jesus Christ to the poor, to the rich, to the up, to the down, to the single, to the married, to anybody of any persuasion because the gospel is designed to address anybody in any place of life where they are. And Luke has exclusive coverage on the story of Zacchaeus because it is in sync with his theology about Jesus Christ. What we find here, church, is this quick biography about Zacchaeus. If you've got a Bible and can read it, it's in verse 1 and 2. Here's what we find about him. First thing we know about him is that he's the chief among the publicans. That actually transliterates in our contemporary jargon that he is the chief tax collector. This is the only time in the whole Bible where this position is mentioned in the whole Bible. He's the supervisor of the Roman IRS. He's the chief tax collector. That's his job. Verse 9 says, Jesus says that he's a son of Abraham, which is a fancy way of saying he's a true Jew. That's his nationality. Text also says he's rich. That's his socioeconomic status. Text says he's short in stature. That's his personal defect. <laughs> he, he's, he got a good job making good money. He's a true Jew, but he's short. That's, that's what we find out about Zacchaeus. And the problem here is multidimensional, uh, Brother Jordan, because we think his shortness is his issue. But the truth, Harold, is not his shortness. It's the reputation that's attached to his shortness. He is a, he's a supervisor of the Roman IRS. And within the historical context of this text, that is a problem because he is viewed in his Jewish community as one of infamy this is, this is a position of offense in his Jewish community and as a result the problem is uh, the system that he is the supervisor over is one that facilitates collecting taxes from his Jewish community at unreasonable or even illegal interest rates with the intent of padding his pocket with the proceeds. Let me sum this up for you. Uh, Zacchaeus is the supervisor of a corrupt tax system that steals money from his own people so that he can pad his own pocket at the expense of stealing from his own people. And somehow, church, he is actually using his job and the proceeds from it to compensate for his shortness. I'm going to try it again because y'all missed all that. If it's just left up to his shortness, he lacks power. He lacks influence. He, 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 he lacks the ability to make the calls, but his position and his power and his prosperity gives him uh, influence and authority in ways he wouldn't have 
due to his shortness. And that presents two problems, church, because number one, this says that in his community, Zacchaeus is viewed as a traitor. He is a Jew working for the Roman government and the Roman government has now established authority over Jerusalem. So they view him as a traitor. But here's the second problem with that. His lofty position says that he captains the corruption over which he oversees. I got you. He captains the corruption over which he oversees. He's the chief tax collector. You, you, I'm going to try it again. You missed all that. It's, it's not just he's stealing from his people. He's more complicit in the corruption because he's the captain of it. Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, be careful how you covet positions because it will expose your motive. Talk in here, Tolan Morgan. Be careful how you want power, you want to be heard, you want a position, you want to tag on your name because it will reveal your true motives. Positions don't make, don't help you to become something, they reveal what you already are. Talk in here, Tolan Morgan. Be careful how you always want your name called and want a tag and want somebody to submit to you because you just might be struggling with shortness. Tap somebody and tell them I am somebody without a title. I'm somebody without a label. I'm somebody without my name ever being called because I'm not insecure. I'm not in no area of shortness and I don't need to have no power or no tag on my name for me to be who God made me to be. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the lender and I'm the borrower and you can call me by my first name. I was somebody before I got this title. I woke up out the bed somebody. As a matter of fact, when I was born, I'm somebody. Somebody just got delivered from insecurity. Tell somebody I'm somebody. Yes, I am. No, look at your neighbor and tell them I'm somebody. I sure am. Mm hmm mm hmm I'm somebody. You got the title, but I got the security. I'm somebody. If they never call my name, the fact that I live is a fact. As a matter of fact, you can't hang around me and be insecure. Because before you bring me down, I'm going to bring you up. If you hang around me, I'm going to make you feel like you are all that. Tell somebody, I'm somebody. I sure am. I am somebody. After everything I've been through, I'm still somebody. After how people have mistreated me, I'm still somebody. And the proof I know I am somebody because I'm not letting the bad stuff that happened to me change who I am. I'm still somebody. Sit down. It's early in the sermon. Sit down. I'm just getting happy about being somebody. That's all, Mazi. I'm just, I like me. Uh, he's so arrogant. Uh-uh, let me correct you. He's so confident. Uh 
I'm somebody. Mm -hmm. The problem is not a shortness. It's his means of trying to compensate for being short. He's rich. He's got a unique exclusive position. But he steals from his own people. He's a traitor and a thief. Y'all ready? And within the context of being a traitor and a thief, the Bible says, but he still wanted to see Jesus. I'm about to run. Y'all don't know how to get happy. So it, it's, 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 it's the theological truth of the text that makes me happy, y'all. Watch this. He's a thief. He's a traitor. He's got a bad reputation. He steals from his own people. But he still wants to see Jesus. Maybe this text is tailored to teach us something that the good church folks wrestle with. Y'all read it? Zacchaeus teaches us. That sin does not possess the ultimate power to kill in us a desire for the divine. Some of y'all say some people are too bad to see Jesus. This text is tailored to teach us that sin does not possess the power to completely kill in us the desire to want to be with the divine. Can I tell you why? Because that would suggest that sin has more power than God. Let me, let, me, let me backdoor you and tell you, church, that sin is not omnipotent because the love of God is unconditional. That while you say I'm not good enough, God says I can't be bad enough. Lord, have mercy today. I knew you wasn't going to say nothing because uh, us good church folk got classifications for sin. The stuff that's not so bad, the stuff that's bad, the stuff that's an abomination. Uh, we got classifications for sin, but, but Luke's whole gospel is built off the fact that the gospel of Jesus Christ is universal and unconditional despite your classification. God has within all of us a tracker. That even in your worst state, there's something inside of us that still wants God. Whether you in the club, whether you at the room, whether you doing dirt, whether you doing drugs, whether you living a challenge in life, whether you not sure what your sex are, whether you broke, whether you up, whether you down, whether you married, whether you single, whether you've killed somebody, whether you've hurt somebody, there is a tracker on the inside of us that says no matter how bad I am, something on the inside of me says I still want God. It's the equivalent of every parent in here that doesn't want your child to do certain things, but you already know if they do, you're going to love them anyway. Watch me. If you can have that kind of love for your child, what kind of love do you think the Heavenly Father got for his child?
Zacchaeus has within him. In light of his corruption, something inside of him says, I want to see Jesus. Watch this, church. His desire allows him to appropriate his dignity. Watch this, John Jackson. The text says he is, he wants to see Jesus, watch this, in light of his shortness. <laughs> so what he does, uh, before y'all dog Zacchaeus, watch what Zacchaeus does. Zacchaeus says, if I'm going to see Jesus, I need to hook up with the crowd that's following Jesus. <laughs> Lord have mercy today. At least, at, at, at least Willie Reigns, we got to celebrate the fact that Zacchaeus, in light of his shortness, says, I need to hook up and get in step with the crowd that's already following Jesus even when I can't see Jesus. Because if I can't see him, I ought to be able to find him amongst people who are already following him. Now, now I know it's easy to preach this text and says that the crowd got in Zacchaeus' way. That's a lie because both the crowd and Zacchaeus had the same desire. They both wanted to see Jesus. And they didn't intentionally block Zacchaeus from seeing Jesus. So their height can't be blamed for his shortness. They're not blocking him from seeing Jesus. The problem is his range of vision is impaired because he's short. Talk Tolan Morgan. He doesn't meet the standard of everybody, so his range of vision is impaired by his shortness. So, what he's got to do is fix his range of vision. So, the crowd is not in his way. He's got to make some decisions that the crowd don't have to make. Preach, stolen Morgan. I just came down your row and you missed it. Because some of you all need to see Jesus, but the crowd in here is not in your way. You got to make some decisions based upon your shortness. Nobody's blocking you. You just got a unique set of circumstances that demand for you to do something different. Watch what Zacchaeus does. Zacchaeus says, listen, it ain't y'all fault. I'm short, you're height. And these are two realities that neither one of us can change. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get ahead of the crowd, run up this sycamore tree, because Jesus is coming in this path. The text mentions a sycamore tree not to just to specify its fruit, but to specify its height. Y'all don't want to help me preach it, so I'll preach it myself. It's a sycamore tree which suggests it has mulberries on it, but the mulberries have nothing to do with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus picked this tree because this tree can stand about 50 to 90 feet high. Preach, Tolan Morgan. I don't care nothing about the fruit. I need its height to lift me up above the crowd. He goes up the sycamore tree about 50 to 90 feet high. And the minute he went up that tree, Lord, hold your boy right here. The second he climbed that tree, he said that if I'm going to see Jesus, I need to lay down my pride. The second he climbed that tree, he could care less about what people going to say about him. He could care less about being rich. He could care less about his position because sometimes if you're going to see Jesus you got to lay down your pride tap somebody and tell them neighbor excuse me I might do something unusual today because I need to have a unique experience with God if I lay at the altar don't worry about me I could care less what you think I could care less what you say because I got to have a unique experience with Jesus that requires me to lay down my pride Philippians chapter number 3 
that eighth day circumcised Hebrew law abiding Pharisee who was once named Saul now Paul says I put away all things and counted them as loss that I might gain Christ John chapter 3 there's another Pharisee there by the name of Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night to lay down his Sanhedrin pride. Second Samuel chapter 6, David successfully takes the Ark of the Covenant from Obed-Edom's house back to Jerusalem. And after they took six steps, he starts to dance in the public. And his old lady, who was evil and cantankerous, looks at him and says, you should be ashamed of yourself dancing out here in the public. And David says, I could care less about how you feel about me and think about me. He chose me and I'm going to dance even the more. I wish I had about a hundred people. I'll make number 101 who would tell your neighbor, if I got to dance, I'll do it and care less how you feel about it. Because ain't no shame in my game I gotta give him glory cuz I want a unique experience with God and it requires me to lay down my pride the minute he went up the tree everything about him laid down Lord have mercy can I ask you a question in here what are you willing to do to see Jesus you could care less about what folks say about you do you know life is too serious for you to come in church and chill Do you know people are dying every second of the day and you come in here like God, like you doing God some kind of favor? Do you know you need some stuff from God that you can't let your pride get in the way? So if I got to climb the tree, I'll do it by myself. If I got to run, I'll do it by myself. His desire is intact and his dignity is not in contradiction. Ran up that tree, y'all. Still for one reason, to see Jesus. When he ran up that tree, he's about 50 to 90 feet in the air. And to his surprise, him seeing Jesus was Jesus seeing him. <laughs> uh, Yolanda, when he went up that tree, he never thought for a second that Jesus would see him. He only went up the tree to see Jesus. But y'all, y'all missed it. If he's 50 to 90 feet in the air, it's possible that his shortness would be absorbed in the tree. It's possible, Fred, that he was so high up and so small in proportion to the tree that he possibly could not have been seen. But y'all missed it. If you're willing to do what other people are scared to do, Jesus has a way of seeing you when you think he doesn't see you. And Jesus comes to the tree, Harlan, and says, Hey, Zacchaeus, come down. Now, everybody wants to spiritualize the fact that Jesus knew his name. Everybody knew Zacchaeus' name. Can I tell you why? Because he's the supervisor. (laughs) 
of the Roman IRS taking all the money from his own people. His name wasn't a secret. Jesus didn't have some spiritual revelation. Oh, that's Zacchaeus. Everybody knew his name. Zacchaeus, come down. As a matter of fact, don't just come down, hurry down. And today, I'm going to stay at your house. <laughs> did y'all miss this? I know you did, so I'm going to show it to you. A life-changing experience with God is on the other side of your pride. I need somebody to write that down, publicize it, do whatever you need to do. A life-changing experience with Jesus is on the other side of your pride. All I want to do is see Jesus, not knowing he want to change my whole life and change my whole house. Okay. Uh, here's where the text becomes interesting church he puts down his pride runs up the tree only to discover that Jesus is coming to his house and since y'all missed it Jesus did not get an invitation to come to the man's house Jesus told himself I'm coming to your crib because salvation is about to come to your house. Wait a minute. Y'all ready? And spies, this was the first time in the text that we heard from the crowd. The text says and they when they saw Jesus and Zacchaeus walking together to the crib text says they murmured and said that he has gone to be guests at a house of a man who is a sinner Greek word for murmured there it's the agonizo. It means to complain throughout a crowd. It is the New Testament version of the street committee. Don't act like some of y'all ain't members. I'm approved the street committee. Y'all ready? Watch the text. They had more to say in complaint than they did in praise. The street committee don't talk in church. They talk outside the church because they got more to say outside than you'll ever hear them say inside. See, if you ain't part of the street committee, your praise is higher than your nosiness. Rich Tolan Morgan. It's always funny how the street committee got a whole bunch to say, but you never hear them say anything in church. They murmured, they complained amongst each other. But wait, Reigns, here's what ran me out my studies. Sandra, watch this. Their complaint was not with Zacchaeus. Their complaint was with Jesus. Because in their mind, Zacchaeus did not deserve the privilege of Jesus' presence. Come here. And they were mad at Jesus because Jesus had favorable plans for flawed people. See, I knew you wasn't going to say nothing. 
because that's how some of y'all act you when you know people dirt and know what they've done and know how they flow you think God shouldn't bless them but you know what we call that favor when you got favor on your life God makes favorable plans for flawed people do I got any flawed people in here that'll thank God even when we know your mess God still got favor on your life Tell somebody he got plans for me. I know he got plans for me. Because people talking more about me now than they ever have in their whole life. And the minute Jesus makes plans for you, that's when folks start talking about you. That's how you know you got favor on your life. Because people struggle with God's plans. Mama, I'm preaching in here today. I said people struggle with God's plans for your life. I'm going to see who really saved in here and who really will tell the truth. You, you, you're so enamored with God's plans that you struggle with his plans. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You sitting up knowing, nah, I know the Lord saw me when I did that. Nah, I know he know what I did. And he's still gonna bless me anyway. <laughs> I know he was there when I did it, but he's still gonna bless me anyway. Do I got anybody in here that'll thank God? God still has favorable plans. For flawed people. And your name will be in the crowd. Because of Jesus' plans. I know God got plans for me. Because I know folk talking about me. <laughs> I wish I had a church in here. See, some of y'all don't want to act, don't want to say nothing. Because you just want to stay on the safe side. Because sometimes you struggle with what God is doing with somebody else because he's not doing it in your life. But I found out that God blesses me so that he can watch how the people around me respond. And if you want God to favor you, you got to learn how to shout for the people that he's blessing. You got to learn how to give God praise for God's plans for somebody else. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm about to praise God for what he's doing in your life. Oh, they didn't get happy. Look back at them and tell them, neighbor, if you got the cup, I'm the saucer. If he starts pouring in your life, I'm going to be right there to catch it. Uh, I got two more points. Now that's probably the first time I done said that in years. Because I normally say, I'm about done. I be lying every time I say that. So I got two. Okay. I got two points. All right, y'all ready? Here's point number one. He told Zach, come out that tree. Uh, I'm going to your crib. I'm going to say your house. Uh, and for the first time, we not only heard from the crowd, uh, Q, we heard from Zach. First time he speaks, he says, Lord, uh, since you come into my house, uh, I'm going to give to the poor. Bev, did you hear that? Let me try it again. Since you come into my house, 
let me straighten up my behavior. <laughs> I can't get no help here. Because you know when certain people come to the house, you know. Let me clean up real fast. <laughs> he said, since you're coming to the crib, uh, I'm going to give to the poor and if I have wronged anybody by false accusation, which means he actually did. I don't know what he's talking about, if. The fact that you said that foolishness says you did it. I'm going to restore him fourfold. All right. He says, Lord. That's a term of redemption. Y'all missed all that. First time he ever speaks, he calls him Lord. Uh, Romans 10 and 9, that's, that's the first part of the plan of salvation. If you will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. That's redemption. I'm going to give to the poor. That's resource. Because whereas I used to take from them, I'm going to give back to them. <clears throat> he says, I'm going to restore everybody I've stolen by false accusation fourfold. Pop, that's restitution. I can't get no help here. He says, since you're coming to my house, you're going to redeem me? My redemption must be evident in how I treat people better. Because my redemption isn't just about what I believe about you. My redemption is expressed in how I treat people better. Because I can't love Jesus and mistreat people. I knew y'all wasn't going to say nothing. You can't claim to be a Christian and support slavery. You can't claim to be a Christian and support the mess and the degradation of women. You can't claim to be a Christian and support the subordination of men. You can't claim to be a Christian and steal from people. Because if you really say, it's going to show up in how you treat people. Wow. Look at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus says, if I'm going to get saved, my salvation must be economic and social. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look. I can't get no help here. You just can't be saved and just believe in Jesus and that's it. It ought to show up in how you treat people. Do I got any help here? And Jesus says, man, that's great. That's good. That's my last point. Here it is. He said, that's great. I'm glad I changed you. And you're going to start treating people right. But the only reason why you did it is because you wanted to see me. And you needed to use a tree to do it. Good night. May the Lord God bless you real good. I bid y'all farewell. But if you're going to see Jesus, you need to use a tree to do it. And if you're going to use that tree, you can't be up on the tree. You got to come down on the tree so me and you can switch places. Because if you're going to see me, you got to let me take your tree. He was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace is upon him. And by his stripes, I'm healed. If you want to see me, see me on the tree. Everyone standing. I don't want you out on a limb because I came so that I can be out on a limb that you might be saved. When he left Jeru and when he left Jericho, he was already on his way to Jerusalem to give his life for our sins Jesus went out on a limb for you just like he did for Zacchaeus 
because there is no sinner that he can't save. There is no sinner he can't save. And there is no person he can't change. I don't need you out on the limb. Because I'm going out on a limb for you. All I need you to do is be willing to do what other people can't do or won't do. Can I tell you the beauty of the text? This is it. The pivot axis of the whole text says, and Zacchaeus stood. At that very moment, his shortness, the reality of his shortness, had to come face to face with the redemption of the Savior. Because for the whole story, y'all know what he'd been trying to do? Compensate for being short. Until verse 8 says, and Zacchaeus stood. It was the moment that he came to face his own truth. That when I face Jesus, I don't have to come lying. I can stand before Jesus in my own shortcomings. Knowing, watch me, watch me church. Jesus didn't change his height. He changed his heart. I asked God, hey man, you know he's short. Why didn't you just make him taller? Why you didn't just fix his defect? Fred, he said, I didn't fix it because I need him to reach some other short people. Sometimes God has so much power, he'll let you be defective and effective at the same time. You think God needs to fix you? No, he just needs to fix your heart. He'll leave you short because there's some other short people you need to reach. And I need you to be able to be a witness to me with people who have a like-minded issue like you. This is the final word. I'm done. Write it down. Do whatever you need to do. God sees where you've fallen short and he still wants you. That's the whole lesson of the story. God sees the areas of your shortcomings and he still wants you. 